Ellis B. Feaster's Radio Air Check and Classic TV Channel. When experts, it's Sunday night and time for the panel to become critics for a night once again. This time we're doing Supertramp's new album called Breakfast in America, and we'll do it side by side. Number one consists of Gone Hollywood, the logical song Goodbye Stranger, Breakfast in America, and Oh Darling. The 91 experts with Supertramp. Ninety one XFM with the ninety one experts reviewing Supertramp's latest album, Breakfast in America. Our panel tonight, we have a good crowd here, all of the ninety one X FM listeners. They're all raising their hands in triumph. <laughs> Returning to our panel are Carol and Steve Rivago, who happen to have Supertramp as one of their all time favorite groups, but we know that's not going to prejudice their comments in any way. Also Gary Goldstein and Melissa Goldstein, who uh, own Gary's record paradise in Escondido, right? Correct. And Rick Barthel, who works for the Times Advocate. Oh, I probably should say that Carol also works for the Times Advocate. And Steve, if I remember correctly, is in <laughs> transportation, right? right? right. <laughs> I'm Cecile, and we're going to finish up side one of uh, Breakfast in America from Supertramp. The last two cuts are the title one and Oh Darling. On 91XFM, the 91 experts continue. Melissa? I have to agree with Gary and Rick about Goodbye Stranger. I like that one the best. I think that that could probably be released as a single and, and maybe even played on more different uh, format stations, like uh, not only rock stations, but maybe even middle of the road. Um, I enjoyed Gone Hollywood. I enjoyed the woodwind section and also enjoyed the production, although it maybe it was a little bit too much. I'm, I'm I kind of like a lot of production. Um, logical song I've just heard on the radio so many times, I've kind of tuned it out. I, I do that a lot when I hear something too many times. I kind of uh, felt that Breakfast in America was there, but it went by so quickly I didn't really hear it enough, probably. And Oh Darling, I felt was a little bit too repetitious. Steve? Well, what can I say about Supertramp? I really like him a lot. Uh, this album has got some really strong points and got some weak points, but overall I'm really impressed with them. Gone Hollywood was a good type of a song with interesting lyrics. A uh, logical song, a song what I thought was just a real steal from Baba G, but still, even though it's a rip, it's still a good song. Goodbye Stranger was my favorite. I really enjoyed that. Some great piano, uh, some super production by Peter Henderson, the producer, along with Supertramp. Uh, I like the way the song builds up. Supertramp just really masters of songs that build up. Breakfast in America was actually my least favorite, and Breakfast in America just leaves me hungry. Oh, we were all supposed to chime in there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, beat you to the line. Right. Okay. Oh, darling, a toe-tapping song. What can I say? I just like Supertramp. I kind of liked the first side of the album, too. I think it's a strong one for Supertramp. It's a little more commercial, I think, than anything they've ever done before. And I had the opportunity to interview a couple of members a few days ago. They said that although they didn't really go for a commercial sound, uh, they also felt that it was probably the most commercial thing they've done. Uh, strangely enough, these are not new songs. They've had them for many years, just didn't get around to recording them until now when they felt like they all fit together. In Gone Hollywood, I thought the transitions, there were a couple of, like maybe three different parts to the song, and I thought that the transitions between those parts were really excellent. A good opening for the album, a uh, sense of humor in the lyrics, and the piano was just a really beautiful little interlude in the middle of it. Logical song, I like, again, Steve is right on the button when he says it sounds just like Babaji, but I liked Babaji, so I guess I have to like the logical song, right. too. The only thing I didn't like, and Carol did, was the saxophone break. I think that it's, uh, to my ears, the saxophone break is a little bit irritating. 
Goodbye Stranger was also my favorite, and I'm surprised they didn't come with that as the single. I thought it was the strongest side uh, song on the side, rather. The vocal that opened it, I loved. It was a little deeper than you're used to for Supertramp. They have kind of high vocals, but he lowered his voice a little bit for this one. And the production was real, real rich, almost perfectly layered. The title track, Breakfast in America, was a little short. I think Melissa and I almost just completely missed it. It was gone and before we even realized it. And Oh Darling, I have to say I was not wild about because I don't like overly repetitious lyrics. I don't care who's doing them. And the song did tend to be just a little bit long. The second side of Breakfast in America from Supertramp has the cuts Take the Long Way Home, Lord Is It Mine, Just Another Nervous Wreck, Casual Conversations, and Child of Vision. The 91 Experts with Supertramp on 91X FM. Ninety-one XFM with the Ninety-one Experts. I'm Cecile. Tonight we're reviewing Supertramp's Breakfast in America, and I'd just like to say before Steve goes to sleep on me that if you'd like to be on the show, we'd love to have you. Just drop us a line to Ninety-one XFM, twelve fifty Sixth Avenue is our address in San Diego, nine two one zero one, or give me a call here at the radio station, and we'll put you on the show, and you can be a critic for the night. We're going to finish up side two of Supertramp's Breakfast in America, and the two cuts are Casual Conversations and Child of Vision, the 91 experts on 91X FM. It doesn't matter what I say Ninety-one X FM with Breakfast in America or Dinner at the X with Super Tramp and the 91 Experts. Side two. I'm sorry, Steve. <laughs> I took away your line again, right? Yeah, really. <laughs> uh, side two's cuts were Take the Long Way Home, Lord Is It Mine, Just Another Nervous Wreck, Casual Conversations, and Child of Vision. Rick, we'll start oh, really? with your Thank comments. You. You're Thank so you. welcome. Well, I'm only marginally Caught you nervous. off guard. <laughs> well, such pressure to be live on tape. Uh, take the long way home different type of cut from the others I liked it and I liked the harmonica part in the middle there Lord is it mine like the piano intro and the uh, slower tempo of the song and uh, another nervous wreck regardless of what Carol and Steve and Gary and Melissa say <laughs> <laughs> sounded a lot like 10cc to easy. me but except it got too long and repetitious there towards the end casual conversations we uh talked a lot through. I liked it, but I don't remember much about it. And Child of Vision, I don't have anything written down, except for it sounded like Tim again. <laughs> <laughs> and Supertramp's not supposed to sound like anybody but Supertramp, right? Did you have a favorite uh, overall cut on the album? Probably the first one, Take the Long Way Home. Oh, the a whole album? Mm -hmm. Goodbye Stranger would definitely be my favorite for the whole album. Melissa? First of all, I'd like to say I really liked the first side better than the second side, I think. In Take a Long Way Home, I really enjoyed the horns again. I liked the woodwinds, and I thought the harmonica was nice. They mixed it all together very well. I liked that. Lord Is It Mine, I really enjoyed the piano, and I thought it was a nice, quiet, kind of laid-back song, and, you know, every album should have one song like that, right? Um, just Another Nervous Wreck, I thought felt that the vocals were pretty garbled. I couldn't really understand what they were saying, and therefore I didn't really enjoy the song. I also thought it was repetitious again. I could have been reading the vocals along with it, but, you know. <laughs> and I kind of, uh, casual conversations just passed me by. It didn't, I didn't write anything down for that. And on the Child of Vision, the last cut, I really enjoyed the piano. I, piano is one of my favorite instruments, so I really liked it, and I thought the it had mostly instrumentals. The, most of the song was instrumental, and so therefore I really enjoyed that song. Overall, I think I enjoyed Goodbye Stranger as well. Steve, your time to be a star here. My time to be a star. Super Tramp, second side, Take the Long Way Home was beautifully produced. I enjoyed that song a whole lot. Lord Is It Mine was a little long, lost my attention. Just a Nervous Wreck sounded just like Super Tramp. 
<laughs> no, no, 10 cc. It didn't sound a lot like 10 cc. <laughs> no, it didn't sound like 10 cc. <laughs> right. Maybe a little more towards Bee Gees, but not 10 cc. <laughs> casual Conversations was a good song for Casual Conversations. And Child Division was a great way to end the album. I enjoy that song a lot. Overall, I rate the album as excellent. And the nicest thing about Super Tramp is that they haven't sold out to the disco craze. That's true. Mm -hmm. There's not one disco cut on the album. Love it to death. Yay. Refreshing, Yay. isn't it? <laughs> Carol. But I like disco singles. <laughs> <laughs> this is an album. Um, I like Side 2. I liked every song on Side 2. The only song that <clears throat> wasn't quite up to par, I felt, was Casual Conversations. It, it didn't stand out nearly as much as the other songs. Um, I like the whole album. I, I do agree that it's basically more commercial and more accessible than Supertramp's previous efforts, but it still retains that, that crisp, clean Supertramp sound and those punchy melodies that I really like. It's, it's probably not their best work, but I thought it was thoroughly enjoyable and, and better than most releases by current groups. And I feel that it's one of the best albums that I've heard this year. Do you have a favorite cut? Oh, it would be hard to see a logical song, Goodbye Stranger, Take the Long Way Home, Child of Vision. I like, I like <laughs> all those album. about my top four. Gary of Gary's Record Paradise. Thought I'd throw that in for you, Gary. Free, free advertising for you. Oh, I'm glad that ten dollars did something. <laughs> I think that uh, this, the first two songs on this side, uh, were among the more enjoyable songs on it. I like the way that the first song started out. You couldn't immediately recognize it as Super Tramp. It seemed a little bit similar to Logical Song. But I did enjoy the simplicity of the arrangement. I think that if you go back to the first cut on the first side, that the arrangement is very cluttered. And I think that is true of some of the other songs too, but certainly not true of uh, Take the Long Way Home. Lord Is It Mine reminded me tremendously of George Harrison, and I felt could well have appeared on his new album, which I do enjoy. However, the song doesn't seem to have as much variation or the arrangement is not as interesting as I would have liked. I think that the next three songs, Just Another Nervous Wreck, Casual Conversations, and Child of Vision, just lose steam. The album seems like they started off with a burst of energy and just went downhill from there. What I do sort of hunger for is that I did like the sax playing on the album, I liked the piano playing, and I think I would have enjoyed an instrumental where it's something that maybe started out with some nice piano and then the sax and the woodwinds would have come in and something that would have really been a, an aggressive type of instrumental that you can tap your toe to and, and still not sell out with. The question I would have for the, the people who enjoy the album so much is that if you compared it to their other albums, uh, where would you rank it? To me, this would be fourth of their four albums. It's Whoa. hard for me to say, Gary, because I'd have to go through and listen to each of the four albums. Um, and, right off and the top of your head. It. I like them all. I, I don't want to pit them against each okay, other. Okay, someone comes over to your house and hasn't heard Super Tramp. What are you going to put on? Probably Crisis What Crisis. Definitely Crisis What Crisis. Then what are you going to put on next? Probably Quietest Moments. <laughs> quietest Moments, Crime of the Century. See, they're making you rate them even though you don't want to. But... You're supporting but, my argument. Not necessarily. The other thing, Cecile oh, mentioned yeah. that these were older songs of theirs. And that has almost like the missing jigsaw in the puzzle to me about this album. Again, I do like Super Tramp. The concert I saw last year or two years ago of theirs was one of the best concerts I had seen in a long time. I generally like their production, but this album just is missing a piece, and it could be that maybe they just are in a dry spell in terms of writing new songs, and perhaps they owed an album to the company, and they went back to some of their older songs that hadn't been acceptable for earlier albums, and we're all of a sudden acceptable now. It's interesting that uh, it has almost been three years since uh, Supertramp put out uh, Breakfast in America from even in the quietest moments, but actually it only took eight months to record the album. The rest of the time, the time lapse between the two was spent touring. Um, so uh, 
I don't know. I, I like the album. I agree that it probably isn't their strongest work, but I think that as a whole, it stands up pretty good to most of the product that's out today. On side two, Take the Long Way Home, I like the harmonica in it. It was something a little bit different for the group. Lord, is it mine pretty much lost me. I have written down almost a little too slow here, so I guess it was kind of dragged out for me. Just another nervous wreck. The album started to sound a little too much the same here. Casual conversations. Again, I liked the vocal. He toned it down just a little bit from that high pitch to a kind of richer sound. I also liked the saxophone there. It was a nice, quiet break for the album. And Child of Vision was a very interesting way to end the album, I thought, although the ending of the song was carried out just a a little too long they kind of got into some jazzy riffs and lost the vocals along the way on the whole i would say goodbye stranger um was the favorite of mine overall cut if you had to buy this album rick would you i don't know am i gonna get it for free <laughs> <laughs> no if, I <laughs> if you don't get it for free would you buy this album <laughs> uh if I was going to buy the album, I probably would have bought it already, so probably not. And Gary, would you take it home from your record store? No. no. Melissa? Um, I could probably do without it. Carol? I already bought it, Cecile. <laughs> the first day it was out, right? Just about two weeks ago. And Steve? Uh, she bought it for me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have any, well, no. That does it for the 91 experts tonight. They'll be at each other's throats as soon as the microphones are turned off. Um, we listen to Super Tramp's latest Science. Breakfast in America. I'm Cecile. I have enjoyed the show. Thank you all for stopping by. Thank you, Mark Gleason, back in the production room for making this all come together. And Gene Knight is next with his 91X album countdown that uh, begins at 11 o'clock. We'll see you next week, same time. Have yourself a good night.